Welcome back, manifestors, and welcome to Manifest Your Dreams. I'm your host, Lexi Wilson, a speaker and manifestation teacher who loves to help women learn practical ways to turn their dreams into plans. If you feel called to change your life and create the outcomes that you want, then this is the show for you. So let's go ahead and get into today's episode. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Manifest Your Dreams. I am your girl, Lexi Wilson, coming at you not only via audio, but via video. So if you, like me, love to watch people as they talk and as they do podcasts, I encourage you to come on over to YouTube if you're already on YouTube. Hey, girl, how you doing? I see you drinking your water, eating your healthy vegetables. Now, um, <laughs> hopefully you eating some vegetables, girl, because I don't know about you, but some days I go days without eating a good vegetable. And I know that that's not good anyway, but I'm working on it, Uh, (laughs) but I'm so excited to be hosting these shows now, not only via the audio, but also on the video. So if you're listening on um, Anchor or Apple or Spotify or wherever you listen, come on over to the YouTube. The link will be in the description and uh, come on over so I can actually see your face and you can see mine. You may get a cameo with Leo because I'm sitting in my chair and he is right behind me. He loves to, I sit on the edge of my chair and I don't know why, because I'm sure that that's not the most comfortable way to sit, but it is how I sit. So there's always this space behind me and he has taken that to be his part of the office chair. So you may see his tail, you may hear a meow. He, he's the co-host. Actually, you know, I should, I should, I honestly should make a graphic and he's the co-host. Why have I not thought of this? Why have you not told me this, guys? Anyway, we're, <laughs> that's neither here nor there. I am so excited for today's episode, not only because we're continuing showing you the video alongside the audio, but also because we're going to be talking about how to manifest. I realized that if the show is called Manifest Your Dreams... I really should have at least one episode dedicated to laying the groundwork, laying the foundation to how you can get started to intentionally creating what you want in your life. I love talking about manifesting. I love to manifest because I just feel like you and I are here to create the life that we want. When you daydream, when you find yourself envious of what other people have, uh, when you find yourself thinking like, I just, I just wish that I could do this or that, those desires are placed on your heart. So you will actually go out and make it happen for yourself. That's personally what I believe. And manifesting is in really simplistic terms. It's just the art of taking what's on your heart and your soul and your mind and body and turning it into something real. And where, where I like to kind of step in to support my clients and my friends is by helping them get clearer on how do I actually go from where I am right now to where I want to be? How do I get that job, get that promotion, get uh, that type of client, start that business, move to that location so I can feel happy with my life or happier with my life? And working through that process is my jam. I love to do it. I've always been a, oh, my friend uh, Kelly said, a master manifester. (laughs) And I say this, not that I knew that I was, but I say this because I do find it relatively easy to manifest. Do I have challenges? You bet your bottom dollar because I, uh, everybody has challenges (laughs) in intentionally creating what they want and Honestly, what I've also learned through astrology and when I used to do my birth chart readings, we're meant to have those challenges because challenges allow us to see who we really are. It allows us to get to, uh, get to like the, the, the strength within us, you know, um, it's not until you go to battle, you know what I'm saying? That, you know, who you are. (laughs) And so life challenges increase our ability to cope, to handle things, to, to know who we are, to build our confidence because we've overcome all of that. 
but I do find it relatively easy to create the things that I want. And um, I think that a, a big part of this is because I just believe that I can get anything I want. And I really do. I've always felt that way since I was a kid. Um, even if I thought it would cut it. Sometimes this is not always the healthiest way to think of it, but before I understood energy and balance, I used to think in my head, like I will get whatever I want as long as I'm just willing to work really hard for it. And that's what a lot of people say in our society, work hard and you'll get what you want. Uh, now that I understand the flow of energy, it's not just about putting in the work and being somebody who's always doing stuff but it's also about embodying, which is the being, which is the acting as if, and, and actually uh, behaving in a way that is the person who already has the manifestation. I hope I'm keeping, like, I hope you guys aren't like, what? <laughs> but it's okay. Trust me, you'll begin to understand. But, um, but the point is, I think that because I always knew that I could have and create whatever I wanted, I pretty much got the things that I wanted. Um, and so it's, it's really cool. So anyway, my, um, my mom, when I was little, she used to call me God's favorite because I would pray for scholarship money or free food or, um, whatever I needed. And it would always happen. And she'd be like, I don't know how this happens to you every time. And I really believe it was just because I had so much faith. And then my friend Kelly calls me a master manifester because of that. And so now leading up to today, where in this episode, I want to share with you the basic steps to how you can start creating what you want in your life. Because like I said, and I have to reiterate the dreams that you have on your heart, the daydreams that you find yourself continuing to come back to, and even the things that you find yourself envious of, they are there so you will actually bring it into your own life. You're not meant to just hold on to those fears or those thoughts and think, why do they have it, but I don't. Since it's time for you to accept that they have it and you are being shown that it's possible for you but you have to walk through the fire, which may be limiting beliefs, which may be going out alone, which may be um, facing those fears. So you can get the thing that you want, which may be exactly what they have, or it may be even better, but you got to, you got to go for it. Right. And that's why it's in front of you. So you can see what's possible. Okay. So let's get into it. Number one, and there's going to be four steps, but um, if you're writing this down, which I highly encourage you to do, cause I, I just find that, I mean, hello, this is free coaching. You know what I'm saying? This is a free class. This <laughs> I have grown my business and have done so much in my life where I manifested this home. I manifested moving to California, which is a dream I've had since I was 14. I manifested all of this. And yes, I have invested in several coaches, but I will tell you that for years, a lot of the stuff that I learned was through free stuff. So this is a free class. Take advantage. The first step is one, get clear on what it is that you want. Okay. If you don't know what you want, it's going to be really hard to one, know how to take action or when to take action or, and two, to see it when it actually appears. Now, this doesn't mean that you have to be super, super specific. For some of us, we do have to be specific. For others, we don't. You can find out more about that sort of thing when you look at your birth chart or when you look at human design. And I'm sure there are many other tools that can help you to understand your own energy and your best way of manifesting. But for a general rule, you need to at least have an idea of what it is that you want. So, you know, when I talk to my clients and they say, I asked them, well, how much do you want to make a month? And they're like, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I would feel fine if I could make maybe a thousand dollars a month, um, maybe five. It would be really great if I could get 10, but somewhere between that. And I'm like, sis, do you understand? Like, those are huge differences. Where, where do we, where do we want to start? Do we want to start at 10 K a month? Do we want to start at a thousand at five? Where do we want to begin? Because by at least establishing a goalpost, 
we can begin the process of taking the right uh, aligned action to get to where we want to go and releasing and surrendering what we need in order to move the things out of our way to get to where we're trying to get. In addition, when you're talking to the universe, the universe needs to know what you want, you know, and so you have to figure that out. Ways that you can figure this out, my favorite way is meditating. Sometimes I meditate and it's the typical traditional sitting quietly, hand on my chest or a hand on my knees. And I'm just focusing on my breath and letting the thoughts come to me. And other times it's more writing and journaling or just going for a walk and listening to what ideas kind of pop in. And in that moment of walking and then receiving an idea or a download is what I like to call them when it's coming from the universe. That's when I find clarity and I realize this is actually what I want. Or sometimes I get clarity on what I want just by taking action, by making any decision and not being tied to it, not saying like, I'm going to do this and this is how it's going to be, but no, I'm going to do this and I'm going to see what comes of it. And if I take this action and I realize this is super uncomfortable, I do not want to do this. Now I know what I actually want. So those are different ways that you can get clarity on what it is that you want, but I encourage you to actually do that. Oh, and the last, the last way that I love is automatic writing. So what I'll do is I'll set a timer. I like to set a timer for like two minutes and 22 seconds. It's angel numbers. <laughs> so I like to set something for, you know, not too long and not too short. And then I will ask myself the question, whether it's how much do I want to make this month or how many uh, courses do I want to sell or what, what, what do I want to manifest when it comes to my apartment, right? When I was moving here, I did that. And then I set that timer and whatever comes to my mind without trying to uh, filter it, I just whether it's a word or a color or whatever, I just put it on the paper because sometimes with that pressure of time, all of a sudden the subconscious comes to the forefront, allowing you to actually see what you want versus the conscious thought sometimes can be confusing. And you're like, I don't know what I want. You know, you're hearing so many ideas from different people and different sources. And you're like, well, maybe I want this, but maybe I want that. And maybe this, but sometimes doing these kind of things like meditating, like going for a meditative walk, like journaling or automatic writing allows you to get to the deeper, bigger mind, which is that subconscious mind. And, and in that space, you can find some clarity. So that's the first thing is get clear on what you want. Number two, ask for what you want. You have to make it known to the universe. What do you want to call in? People ask in different ways. You can create a vision board and actually put the images on this board so that we, when you see it, you have a vision of the thing that you're asking for. You can say prayers to a God or many gods or to nobody, <laughs> but if it just feels good to sometimes just talk aloud and ask for support, ask for the, from the universe, from source, whatever it is that feels most comfortable for you to believe in. But when you actually make it known that this is what I desire, again, you start to set the energy in motion to create the outcome that you want. I know that uh, it's simple to say that and to think like, of course, of course, that's what I'm supposed to do. But a lot of people miss that. A lot of people don't actually set the intention to ask for it. They don't set what an intention on what they even want. And then they don't even get, they, they don't get clear on what they want. And then they don't actually ask for it. They just kind of expect it. They just kind of think, okay, well, maybe it'll just show up. And although like, that's fine to have that level of belief, but you do need to set it up by first requesting that it comes into your life um, and trusting that it will, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, so ways that you can ask for it, like I said, are through prayers, are through, you could even write it down. Um, I love to ask for support anytime I want, but especially in ritual. I just love ritual and it's probably because of the Capricorn nature of me, <laughs> but I love 
working with the full moons and working with specific astrological events like conjunctions or things like that to enhance my ability to attract what it is that I want. So I may write on a piece of paper at the full moon, this is what I want to manifest in the next six months between that full moon and the new moon six months from that date uh, or whatever it is. I can definitely talk about moon work if you'd like me to. So let me know over on um, Instagram or TikTok now. I am on both, sis. I am on both. And I love it. Okay. <laughs> All the links are down in the description, but you can find me at both places at the Lexi Wilson. That's T H E L E X I. Don't forget the E. Hey, said it with me, I'm sure. Wilson. <laughs> and let me know over in my DMs if you would like me to do an episode on moon work. I mean, that would be so much fun. I really, really love, love, love working with the moon. So, I often use that inside of my manifestation practices. Sometimes I feel like it does enhance my, my manifesting, but I also feel like it's just fun and it's just something to look forward to. And that's one of the things that I love about spiritual practices is just the amount of fun that it brings to me and comfort that it brings to me. So um, you can certainly do that. There's also vision boards. Like I said, you can create a vision board. I love creating vision boards. I have physical ones and digital ones. Uh, the digital ones that I create, I use uh, the, uh, the app Canva, C-A-N-V-A.com. You can create it for free or there's a paid version as well. And uh, what I love is you can just gather images from wherever you want, Google, Pinterest, of the things that you desire, like a BMW or 10,000 followers on TikTok or, you know, a new baby, whatever it is. And then you put it into the board uh, on Canva. And then you can put it as your background for your phone or on your computer. I have mine on my phone. I also have mine on my iPad as well. And then I also have physical vision boards where I've taken clippings from magazines and books and I put them on the actual vision board. And then I have several vision boards around my house because I just, I love, it's my creative outlet to dream. <laughs> and so I just love putting these images and it's so fascinating how many times I have manifested Manifested the things that are on my vision board. I'm sure that you have heard this from many other people who actively use vision boards in their practices. They will tell you how effective it is. It's crazy. So that's one of the ways that I love to make my requests known to the universe is by actually placing it on my vision board. I like to look at my vision boards. So I keep them out and have them all around my house and in my office, in my, um, in my bedroom. Uh, but there are some people who feel better by actually just releasing it and creating the vision board and then putting it in a closet or things like that. It really just depends on what feels most abundant to you. And that's what I tell everybody to do. Like whatever makes your heart feel like that feels easiest, then do that. Because for some people, when they have their vision board out, they feel like when they don't see it happening fast enough, uh, that it, it, it puts them in a space of feeling like it's not going to happen, which makes it not happen. So, um, if you feel like that's what happens for you, then it's okay to create the vision board and put it away, uh, or not put it as your background on your phone and your computer. But if you are inspired by looking at the images and it makes you feel more excited, then go ahead and have it out. Step number three, and under number three, we're going to have two different bullet points. So keep that in mind. So number three is believe that it will come true. Okay. It's not enough to just ask the universe for what it is that you want. You have to actually believe that it's possible. At the beginning of this episode, I shared with you one of the reasons I believe that I am a, mess, a master manifester and have always been that way is because of my belief. I have so much faith that there is nothing that I cannot have or cannot accomplish or cannot do. I really believe that. <laughs> I believe everything that I want is possible. Now, like I said, I haven't always had a healthy mindset around it because sometimes I've thought, even if it's by sheer ambition, I will make it happen. And that's not always a healthy way to be just because it puts a lot of energy on the doing part instead of the surrender and the allowing and letting the universe support you. You're putting it all on your shoulders when you get into this action of like, do, 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 you know? 
So it's not always healthy to have that mindset. And um, up until I became spiritually awakened, that was my mindset. I was willing to do whatever it took to get to wherever I needed to be. And I do believe that that's why in so many ways I was able to manifest so many amazing things in my life. Even people in my family are always talking about the fact that, you know, you've, I've lived in Chicago, I've lived in Atlanta, I've lived in several cities in Florida, I've cr- traveled across the, the world, I've been out of the country, I moved to California, I, I do all these things that for many other people, they're like, I haven't even left my city, and yet you've been and all these places. And I'm sure it's because I just, I just don't give up. I do (laughs) what I got to do. I believe that what I want is possible. And so when you are asking for that manifestation to come into your life, whether it's love or a, a baby or healing, maybe you want a healed relationship with a family member. Okay. There, there goes Leo uh, <laughs> jumping off the chair. Um, but whatever it is that you desire, you first have to believe that it's possible because at the end of the day, if you don't believe that it's possible, where, who else is going to believe more than you. Okay. What is going on? My cat is, he, he always finds the loudest thing that he can find. And then he's like, Hey, let me, let me get on this. And now he's found a piece of paper that he's just getting comfortable on. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, let's get back to it. Um, I'm reminded of Usher when he was on uh, James Corden of the late, late show. And James Corden had asked him a question about the fact that when he was young, he would tell everybody he was going to be a famous singer and that he was so convinced, like he, he really believed it. And James was like, what made you think that? Like, did you have a premonition? What, what made you know that you were going to be a famous singer? And he said to him, I, I knew I was going to be a famous singer because I believed I was going to be a famous singer. That was it. I just believed it. And if I didn't believe it, why would I expect anybody else to believe it? Oh, I love that because it's a fact. It's true. You're expecting other people to believe that you are the, the, the best person for the job. You're worthy of the, the, uh, um, the promotion that you desire, that whatever, whatever, but you don't believe that you are worthy. You don't believe that you're the best person for the job. So you have to work on belief in order to actually call it in. Now, I'm not going to say that it's impossible to manifest something if you don't fully believe, because that's not entirely true. I talk about this inside of my um, manifesting course, how to start manifesting and change your life. And the reason I talk about this is because doubt is a real thing that we all you know, struggle with. I, I definitely have a hard time with it. And I feel like because I have changed my relationship to what doubt is. And I've, I've added value to it in the sense that I look at doubt as a necessary part sometimes to, to the growth that's, that is required in order to achieve the manifestation or to sustain the manifestation once it arrives. So instead of me looking as, at doubt as proof that I can't have what I want, I look at doubt more as a stepping stone into becoming who I need to be to sustain the manifestation. Does that make sense? I talk at, at length about this inside of the course. So I totally invite you to check out uh, my course, how to start, how to, wait, what, I forgot the title there, how to start <laughs> manifesting and change your life. And I created that specifically so, to, so I can help people to actually intentionally create what they want. But I do think that it's really important that you understand that belief is, is everything when it comes to achieve, manifesting what it is that you want. Now, the f- 3A to this is you have to release the limiting beliefs that stand in the way of your ability to believe. The limiting beliefs are essentially the beliefs that you have that limit your ability to go after what you want. So let's say that you want to manifest making $5,000 a month in your business, but you have a belief that your product is not worth not even $60. So either one, you're going to have to work really hard to get some visibility so that way you can get a mass amount of people (laughs) to buy your product at $60 every month so that way you can get the $5,000. Or you're going to have to start looking at that belief that 
why do I think that this is only worth $60? Now, obviously this is, you know, if we're talking about something small, like one crystal, you know, <laughs> that might work. But if we're talking, I've seen so many people undercharge their services. I was one of them that did that for a very long time. Undercharging my services because I was just too afraid to charge what I actually knew it was worth. Um, and so I encourage you to look at what are these beliefs that I have that stop me from showing up in the way that I want to. I had a client that really wanted to move across the country. And when I moved, it inspired her. She was like, cause I moved across the country at the same time. And so she was like, oh, this is the sign that I needed to go for it. But when we would talk, she would pretty much talk about all the reasons she couldn't move and all the things that were going to go wrong. And she had no proof that any of this was actually true, but it was where, where her mind was. And as a result, she did not actually take the action. Now, it's okay. I believe in divine timing and so does she, but she didn't take the action, not simply, simply because um, she just decided she didn't want to. But no, but because she had to work through those limiting beliefs, what are those things that are holding her back? And so we worked through that to, to help her kind of create a pattern for when she's ready to move across the country, because it is a scary move, but we got to work through those limiting beliefs to get where we want. And then 3B, you got to protect your mind from naysayers. <laughs> you have to surround yourself with people who believe people who believe in the impossible, people who believe in the, the, the dreams, you gotta, you gotta surround yourself with those people. Because if you are asking for advice or support or encouragement from someone who either is not living in their purpose, who has given up on their dreams, or who feels like life is just one big series of pain and suffering, when you then ask them for advice or support, they don't know how to give that to you because they can't give it to themselves. They can't give you more than what they, when, what they give to them, you know? And so if you're saying like, Hey mom, I really want to move across the country, but if your mother feels like no, and she might mean very well. So we're not, you know, we love moms. Okay. But, <laughs> but let's say if your mom who means very well is like, no, but you can't do that because maybe she had a thing that she, she moved across the country and it, and it didn't work out for her or it triggered a lot of fears and she didn't work through those limiting beliefs. And so she doesn't want you to have the same experience. So she's like, no, 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 you cannot do that. So she puts all this energy of this isn't possible when in reality it is possible for you. It is possible. The fact that it's on your heart means that it's something that you could create. It doesn't mean that you should create it. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't create it either. It just means it's something that's on your heart that you could actually bring forth. So you have to talk to people who are living their dreams, even if it's not the same thing that you're asking for support on, but they are the ones who can really help support you in recognizing whether or not um, you want to go for it or not. But you have to protect yourself from those who are just, if they're not living a life that you admire, that's not the person that you want to ask for advice from when it comes to, you know, if they have, if you're asking them for relationship advice, but they don't have great relationships. Do you want to be asking them for advice? You know, even if they mean well, probably not. All right. And then, oh, I forgot actually, this is A, B, and C. Okay. So um, three C is going to be act as if. So you're going to act as if it's already here. When you've asked for what you want, and now you're believing that it's going to come, in part of believing is acting as if it's already in your life. So let's go back to the example of moving. When you're moving across the country, you want to act as if one, you're moving. Okay. Cause I've seen too many people talk about, oh, I'm going to move. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. But then they don't put any plans into motion. They're not looking for apartments. They're not going out for visits out to the place that they want to go to. They're not looking for jobs if that's important for them. Uh, they're not actually preparing for this move. <laughs> so do you really believe that you're actually going to be moving to, across the country or moving to another state or another city? You have to actually put these things in motion by actually acting as if it's already going to happen. Even if you don't know the how you're releasing the how, because notice how in none of these steps, am I talking about these, this is how you actually do it. I'm talking about the process of releasing and attracting what you want. You release the how 
to the universe. But you take these steps, such as acting as if it's already guaranteed, it's already going to happen for you. And then you start showing up in that way. So when I knew that I was moving to California, I started acting as if I was going to California. I was looking for cities to live in. I was looking for apartments. I was looking for locations that I might particularly like once I drove out there. Um, I started looking for what is the road that I'm even going to take coming from Florida all the way out to California? Are there any stops that I want to make? You know, I started preparing for this move, even though I didn't know what date exactly I was going to leave. And I didn't know all the logistics. I just knew that it was real. It was a reality that I was going to have. So you have to start acting as if something that can help you is if you sit down and you ask yourself, if I already had the thing that I want, a relationship, um, the promotion at my job, I'm making 10K a month, whatever it is, if I already had those things, how would I act? And then you're going to start acting like those things. You can take one or two things off the list and you're going to start showing up that way. So let's say you are, you're trying to manifest a uh, healthy weight loss, right? Okay. So if I already was at the weight goal that I want, how would I act? What would I eat? How many times would I work out? What kind of workouts would I do? What time would I go to bed? What time would I wake up? right? You would, you would start to, to get clear on what are the, what is the lifestyle that accompanies the version of you that's already manifested it. Cause there is a version out, out there that's already manifested it, but that's quantum physics and we won't get into it today, but <laughs> maybe in another <laughs> episode, <laughs> I get, I get a little all crazy. Okay. You guys know, you already know what it is. Um, but we want to act as if it's already here. And that's, what makes it happen? I think of it like sleeping. Sleeping is such a weird thing, right? Because when you go to sleep, I don't know about you, but I don't immediately fall asleep. If you're one of those people who does, I'm so jealous. I'm so jealous, <laughs> but I am not. And I thought about it, how crazy it is that every time I go to bed, I close my eyes and I pretend like I'm sleeping, but I'm not really sleeping. I'm fully awake, but I'm pretending like I'm sleeping with the intent that eventually I will fall asleep. And I look at manifesting very similarly that you got to act as if you're sleeping and then you'll be asleep. So act as if you've already manifested it and then you'll manifest what you want. Does that make sense? Okay. So last but not least, step number four is receive. This is important because you think, you think that it's easy to receive. But how many times has someone tried to gift you with a gift card or a cash or an opportunity and your answer was, you know what, don't worry about it. It's all right. Thank you so much, but I don't need that. Girl. Girl. Let your blessings come through. You have no idea how that manifestation is showing up in your life. So you have to actually let it in. You have to allow the manifestation to show up. You have to accept it once it shows up at your door. You have to bring that energy into you instead of rejecting it when it's sent to you. So for example, let's say you want to manifest self-confidence and you go out to Target and someone at the store says to you, oh, you look so beautiful today. It's a total stranger. So you really believe like this person is just being really nice. Like, uh, maybe I'll look good today. But instead of just accepting that, you're like, oh, no, no, this, oh, girl, I look a mess today, girl, but thank you. Accept it. Accept it because that allows you to start feeling confident in recognizing your beauty. Here she saw something in you. Maybe it was your aura. Maybe it was your energy. Or yes, maybe it was physically that you look good today, sis. And instead of just accepting that in and allowing that energy, that experience to sort of morph you into realizing like, you know what? I do feel really good today because maybe, you know, sometimes I've seen people and they might, you know, physically look quote unquote a mess, but their aura, like I could just feel it. And I'm like, girl, you are beautiful. Cause I could feel their joy. They're like something about them. And they may respond by thinking just like, I'm only focusing on their physical and I'm not, but I'm an energy girl. So, you know, but, and then kind of push it off. Oh girl, this whole thing. I'm just like a mess. But girl, I wasn't just talking about your cute outfit. 
<laughs> I'm talking about your aura. <laughs> But the point is, is that when you allow that, that to actually just come into your energy, it may help you to start to transform and see your beauty and start to boost that confidence that you're trying to manifest. But when you push the energy away, it's not just the compliment, but the energy of someone noticing you, someone seeing you, someone recognizing the beauty within your energy. And instead of just receiving it, you push it off. Can you see how that actually de deters you from manifesting the thing that you want? So the same thing when we're talking about money, you're saying, I really need to manifest more money. And then one of your friends, says, Hey, I want to send you a hundred dollar, you know, gift card to Sephora. And instead of just accepting it, you're like, no, 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 no. I could never, I could don't, don't even please don't. That is money coming your way. That's a hundred dollars that you get access to, to use for the beautification of your body and your mind and your soul. <laughs> you have to allow that in. And the more that you get into the divine feminine, which is all about receiving and accepting, the easier it is for you to actually receive and accept more often. You see how this works? So it's very important that you actually surrender to the idea that it is safe for me to allow what I want to come in. Because then when the ultimate manifestation, the thing that you actually desire finds its way to you, which may be coming through these opportunities of people giving money to you, of people giving you an opportunity to speak at their event, or someone just simply giving you a compliment. Those little things might be contributing to the, the manifestation that you desire, or they might be the actual doorway allowing things to come through, but you first have to, to actually surrender and let it come in. So I know that uh, there was a lot in this, so I am totally open to answering any questions. So again, please let me know over on TikTok or Instagram if you have any questions about this process. I tried to keep it as simple as I can because we all have different ways in which we manifest. I mean, so many coaches do different things and I do different things too, uh, different times and different um, for different occasions simply because it's fun. There's not, there's not just one way to do pretty much anything. I mean, there's, we have, I look at it as, um, when I look at birth charts and I see how we're more than just the sun, we're the sun, we're the moon, we're the Mercury and Venus and Venus is different from like Saturn, right? It serves a totally different purpose, different energy, and it influences our energy totally differently, but they're still very vital and important. So just like the planets all have their different ways of being, we humans have our different ways of being and creating. And so manifesting, which is that to create kind of mentality, um, you may align with the things that I use, or you may align with what somebody else uses, or you may align with both and you kind of just add it all together. Um, and so that's kind of what I do, but I wanted to keep this super, super clear and simple so you could actually get start, started on what you want, get clear on what you want, ask for what you want, believe that it will come and then receive it once it arrives. Now, if you want more resources than what I can provide in a short little podcast, I want to invite you to actually try out my free manifesting course. I'm very, very excited about it. Um, and I did mention, yes, it is absolutely free. So there's a link down in the description where you can get started. You'll put your email in and then it will be sent directly to your inbox. And the cool thing about this is it is all about learning how to get started on intentionally creating the things that you want. So if you find yourself feeling really um, discouraged you're like, I need to get out of this job. I need to manifest clients. I need to manifest this. I need to whatever. This course can at least get you started on the process of intentionally creating the outcomes that you want. And so I encourage you to actually get started on that course. I'm very proud of it. And I feel like you'll really love it. Plus the cool thing is that you can actually use my app and I'll show you how to do that inside of the course as well. Uh, so that way you can watch it straight from your phone. You don't even have to use your desktop if you don't want to. So go to the link uh, down in the description bar to get started. Anyway, thank you so much for tuning in. 
I will be starting to post these podcasts on Mondays instead of Tuesdays. Tuesdays is my favorite day of the week, but uh, some changes in the schedule are happening. So uh, there will be episodes now every Monday at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Anyway, I hope that this encouraged you and inspired you. Be sure to share this with a friend if you found this to be really funny and entertaining and informational, and I'll see you in the next episode. (laughs) Bye. Thank you.